Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Bear Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, I've got a really exciting episode for you today. I'm sure there are plenty of Elder Scrolls fans out there, and yeah, you're going to be really excited about this one, even if you're not really excited about this one as well, because there's some awesome design cards. And yeah, first up, a huge thank you to Alano from the Custom Dragon Highlander community for letting me share their awesome set with you all. And here's what Alano had to say about this set. The Elder Scrolls is my favorite fictional setting. Oblivion was actually the first RPG I played, and I was in love with it. It felt endless and like I could play it forever. I think I have over 2,000 hours in it. I didn't have much of a life in grade school. Anywho, when the Elder Scrolls Legends came out, I was in its closed beta and was pretty involved in its community. Was friends with the elite designer on their first set for a time, but we stopped talking after a different company took over TS Legends, and then it died from there. I wanted to bring back the idea of playing a TS card game and thanks to Legends, I have a massive pool of art to work with, around 2,000 pieces. Warded was made a few years ago before MTG made a keyword named Ward. I decided I would keep it as is because I errat if I errated stuff for this project, whenever Watsita does something, I'd be having to errata the set till the day I die. Prophecy and Prophesize were made as a reference to Legends card game, and I like them quite a bit. They aren't as strong as they look, trust me. Prophecy is fine, but it's nothing not so with that let's first uh okay well i need to mention really quick the core set itself has 318 cards which is a ton and it's absolutely incredible and there's some amazing designs in there and uh i'm not going to be highlighting every single one of them because that would take uh, a long long time and i don't have time on this episode but make sure that you check it out the entire list is going to be linked in the description below so yeah make sure you check that out First up, I'm going to highlight some of those, uh, you know, new keywords, essentially, and what they do. Then, of course, you know, as a commander player, I uh, kind of have an interest in legendary creatures, so I'm going to be highlighting some of the awesome commanders. So, with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, let's talk about that Prophesize mechanic. White Run Trooper, two and a white for a 2-1 with first strike, and it has Prophesize, which means at the beginning of each end step, if sources an opponent controlled cause you to lose three or more life this turn draw a card so that's a really interesting mechanic one that essentially is kind of like you know attack deterrence damage deterrence for an opponent you know hey if you hit me i'm gonna get a benefit for that you know obviously this is an overcosted creature you know for three minutes for a two one first strike but yeah you were getting a potentially big upside again by drawing a good amount of cards if this stays in play and actually this mechanic this keyword interacts with a, another one which was kind of mentioned as well uh, when i was going through the description essentially uh, and that would be prophecy prophecy for zero on this dawn star healer prophecy for zero you may cast a card for its prophecy cost when you draw it if you drew it from a prophesized trigger so kind of like you're prophesizing right you get hit for a certain amount of damage you draw up the top of your library and if you draw into a prophecy card you get to play it for a reduced cost or a different kind of cost and yeah kind of like you know a miracle and i kind of really like that kind of interaction and yeah just having a prophecy prophesized deck i think could be really interesting now the other mechanic that was talked about was ward and what ward means that you're going to get a ward counter on a creature and the next time the creature be dealt damage or be targeted by a spell or ability an opponent controls you prevent that damage or counter that spell or ability and remove all ward counters from that creature and yeah we can see that on the card lesser ward and instant for just a blue you know target creature becomes warded so yeah definitely a lot of potential with cards like that and, and a very interesting and unique mechanic one that you know somewhat is like ward in magic and in some ways is better some ways is worse i mean ward basically you know is lesser hexproof in a way this is kind of like a better version of hexproof but kind of a one-off effect you know if you have a ward counter on it obviously you know if you could you know proliferate it get more counters on it maybe spread those counters out to other creatures that could be even more impactful so yeah just some interesting things to consider and yeah some really interesting keywords and interesting new mechanics for an awesome set like this and I, you know obviously again make sure you check out that link so you can see all the awesome cards that you know interact with this and you know how this card and how these kinds of mechanics will play you know in a kind of limited environment i think that'd be absolutely awesome but now, as a commander player, I, of course, need to highlight some awesome legendary creatures, some really well-designed ones from this set. So let's start things off, and please excuse any mispronunciations I have, because they're probably going to be happening. Anyways, right, here we go. 
Deveth Fire, Fear, there we go. Anyways, 4-4 four, four Dunmer Wizard for 3 blue, blue, blue. Whenever you cast an insert sorcery soul copied for each other spell you cast for it this turn, two targets for the copies. Um, Yeah, that is just a spell, just eruption essentially, you know, just uh, basically, you know, kind of like a... Um, What's that one called? A Thousand Year Storm, essentially, kind of like that, where you are just getting spell after spell after spell, copy after copy after copy. The more spells you cast, you know, the kind of low to the ground cantrips with this commander seem like they'd be great. Being able to just get more and more copies of spells, you could have some really big, exciting plays. I mean, I'm just thinking about, you know, maybe cards like, you know, Dramatic Reversal or High Tide and how they can interact with this once you get enough copies of them. Yeah, that could be really exciting. Next up, Gortwag, Gro, Nagram, a 3 2 Orsamir Warrior that costs black, black, red, red. Orsamir spells you cast cost black red less to cast if an opponent lost life this turn effects only gonna uh, reduce the amount of colored mana you pay at the beginning of combat on each turn or spear creatures you control get plus x plus x until end of turn x the amount of life your opponents lost this turn yeah this is a fantastic tribal commander one that not only gives you cost reduction uh you know again it is conditional you have to make an opponent lose life but if you do you're getting that cost reduction which can be massive at getting more and more creatures into play and of course the more and more, you know, uh, you know, life loss that your opponents have in that turn as well, the bigger your creatures get too. So yeah, a great tribal commander design. Next up, Odaving, a 10-10 dragon that costs 12 mana. A massive amount of mana. Let's see what it does. When you cast it, destroy all creatures. Yeah, uh, uh, 12 mana for a 10-10 flyer that destroys all creatures when you cast it. That seems like a fan fantastic trigger one that can be just absolutely massive can really save you and also you know set yourself up for success and of course on top of that beginning of your end step for each opponent destroy target opponent that player controls yeah not only will you get to you know take out your opponent's creatures from this you know just cast essentially also end step let's get rid of some permanents that are pesky this thing is well we cost 12 mana but for a reason but yeah this thing could have a massive impact on the game. Next up, General Tullius, a 1 1 Imperial Soldier with Vigilance that costs green white. At the beginning of your upkeep, you get a 1 1 white and green Imperial Soldier creature token. Creatures you control have Vigilance as long as you control five or more creature tokens. I really like this design. This kind of, hey, all right, I'm going to help you build up your army, but also you get a bigger benefit if your army is larger. So once you get to those five tokens, you know, whether they're made with this or with other things as well, yeah, you're getting an extra benefit. Uh, vigilance, you know, as long as you control five or more, that is something you can get to pretty quickly in Selesnia with, you know, a focus deck around that. And giving your creatures vigilance allows you to be very aggressive and still have up blockers. So, yeah, I really like this kind of design. Of course, this commander can really, you know, benefit from, well, ways to pump your tokens, ways to pump your army, ways to, you know, benefit your tokens even further, uh, ways to make even more tokens. So, yeah, a very well designed commander. Next up, though, let's move on to Red Brahmin, a 3-3 Argonian Pirate that costs 2 black green. You may play a land on each of your turns, so that's nice. Also, pay a black green, sacrifice a land, get a minus one minus one count up to one target creature to vote controls, and draw a card. You control seven more lands, you get a minus one minus one counter on each creature target opponent controls, and draw a card instead. So, yeah, this can help you get to that seven land amount quite quickly. Again, give you an extra land each turn, and then you can utilize those lands, you know, outside of just utilizing them for mana. Hey, let's get some minus one minus one counter on our opponent's creatures sure just doing it once at first is nice but getting it on all their creatures can be massive this can just be devastating against you know low to the ground maybe even token decks like we just mentioned but also maybe you've got some proliferate effects in there as well to help build up on those minus one minus one counters maybe you've got some other benefits from your opponents having minus one minus one counters yeah this i think can be a very impactful commander and one that i think would be really exciting to build around Moving on, speaking of exciting, the Adoring Fan. I love this design. A 0-1 Bosmer Peasant that costs two and says, you may cast a spell named the Adoring Fan from your graveyard or exile once each turn, and it's got Defender. So yeah, I mean, this is just a 0-1 with Defender, but it can keep coming back again and again and again and again. Yeah, it is basically two, paying two mana each time. Obviously, cost reduction with this one can be massive because yeah, it's just you know generic mana for that cost. So if you've got ways to reduce that generic mana, Cool. You can just keep casting this for free again from your graveyard to exile. And yeah, you can utilize it from exile, or you can utilize it, you know, in ways, you know, to sacrifice it to get your graveyard, or ways to exile it as well. So you can keep getting it back again and again and again. It could work very well with aristocrat style strategy. Definitely an interesting design for sure. Moving on, Merrick at Aswala, a 3 3 Red Guard Knight that costs four blue, red, red. It's going to cost one less to cast for each equipment you control, and it's got prowess. Whenever a non-token equipment enters the battlefield under your control, create tokens copy of it. Um, yeah, hyper equipment commander. Sign me up for that. 
This, uh, again, can just keep getting recast essentially at three mana for the most part, even if it's dealt with, because again, if you've got a bunch of equipment in play, you're going to reduce that cost. And again, you're doubling up on every single one of your equipment. Yeah, you're going to have some very powerful plays with this one. I mean, obviously you can go, well, I mean, Voltron, which that prowess will help with as well when you're casting more and more spells. But of course, you could go wide as well if you want to attach your equipment to, you know, multiple things. So yeah, this is just a, definitely a very interesting commander. One that, well, I think has a lot of potential and it's a nice, unique direction for an equipment style commander. Moving on, I believe Alno mentioned this was their favorite one. Merak Dovakin, a 4-4 Elder Wizard that costs three black, black. Whenever a player draws a card or discards a card, that player mills a card. Spicy. Anyways, pay one in a black, return target, dragon, or shout card, mana value, X less from your grave to your hand, wrecks the number of cards milled by players this turn. Now, I will mention, I believe in that 318, there are not shout cards yet, but I believe in an expansion or so, I, I think Alano mentioned that they will be coming. Anyways, yeah, uh, definitely a very interesting and unique commander. One that I absolutely love the concept of milling players whenever you draw or discard. Whenever any player draws or discards, they have to mill that card. So yeah, I mean, if they mill cards. So yeah, you're going to be able to, you know, utilize maybe some wheel effects, especially some wheel effects, some discard effects, some force draw potentially. And yeah, being able to get back dragons and shout cards from your graveyard is going to be a very impactful thing. Moving on, Queen Berenzia. Berenzia, there we go, maybe. A 2-4 Dunmer Noble that costs one blue, black, black. Whenever a creature control dies, each player mills two cards. That's already, again, going heavy in a mill. I like that. Pay blue, black, exile two cards from your graveyard. If a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger this, this turn, ability triggers additional time. Basically, bub doubling up on, you know, that death harmonicon, essentially, in a way... You know, essentially, you know, being able to just utilize those cards out of your graveyard to ensure that that can happen a lot. And yeah, I mean, having, you know, Riskrat style strategy potentially to be able to sacrifice creatures to fill your graveyard incredibly quickly can be very impactful. I mean, the Adoring Fan could come into this, obviously, but so could, you know, cards like Reselling Skeleton, maybe other ones that, you know, can actually come back into play for free, like Prize Amalgam, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this, I think, has a lot of potential and can definitely be a very interesting direction for a mill commander. Moving on! Oh, here we go. Naha Gleave. Let's go with that. Terror of Rorikstead. A 4-4 Dragon with Flying Vigilance that costs 4 green green. Whenever you cast a spell, choose 1. Add green. Put a counter on this creature. And this fights a uh, target creature. And I'm not going to attempt that name too many times. I'm just, I feel like I'm going to keep messing it up. Regardless, yeah. A mono green commander that cares about casting spells. I absolutely love that different direction. Being able to give you additional mana. Kind of like, you know, essentially making all of your spells into cantrips potentially. Or making this bigger. Or, you know, fighting down some creatures. So obviously those last two really play together very well. I mean, all of them really play together because you can cast more spells too. But yeah. Being able to make this into an absolutely, again, terror for your opponents. Making it massive. Helping it fight. Maybe, maybe finding some ways to give it indestructibility. So that you can just start taking out every single creature on the board essentially once you get things going yeah i really like this kind of a you know kind of storm fight you know counter commander it's got a lot of potential moving on aaron the eagle primarch a3 for ultmer noble that costs three white blue instant and sorcery spells you cast cost x less to cast for x the number of detained permanent your opponent's control that's right detain tribal is here absolutely love it sign me up for this pay two white blue detain target not land permanent you gain two life so yeah Detaining, again, is basically kind of temporarily shutting down a permanent. And the more and more things that you shut down, the more cost reduction you get in some sorcery spells. That is a lot of potential. A very exciting new kind of a commander. I absolutely love utilizing Detain. Oh, man. I, I just, that this just is a commander that I think really speaks to me. And I definitely, definitely, definitely get to have a lot of exciting things to do with it. Moving on, Blade Master Reeve, a 4-3 Daedra Warrior that costs 2 red red. Whenever one or more other sources you control deals damage to a permanent, sorry, deals damage to a player, Blade Master Reeve deals X damage to that player, X the number of other sources that have dealt damage to a player this turn. Yeah, get all those sources that you can into play, all those pinging effects into play, deal out some damage, and have this deal the most damage of all. Maybe even, you know, give it some life links so you can gain a ton of life as well. Yeah, I really like this unique design. I think that this has a lot of potential. Tim Commander players, not just players named Tim, but players who like Tim's, you know, those tap pingers, are going to absolutely love this kind of a commander. Next up, Elena Binock, a 1-2 boss marcher that has reach that costs one red-white. Whenever a source you control deals non-camp damage, you get a counter on Elena, and then pay one red-green tap. It's going to deal damage equal to the number of counters on it to any target. When that target dies this turn, untap 
this card is Elena. My goodness, I, I, I don't know why we haven't seen something like this before because yeah, I, I mean, this is basically just, hey, make this archer more and more deadly and just eventually just, hey, uh, I'm just going to you know, pay mana tap, take that out. Pay mana tap, take that out. Just be able to untap this again and again and again. That seems like a very good approach. One that, you know, you can really, I mean, stack up on those counters, you know, find ways to get even more counters on this or, you know, just actually get some death touch on this so it can start taking things out very quickly. I absolutely love this design. Moving on, tier Nordic Blade, a 3-2 Nord Warrior with haste and first strike for two red white. It's going to get plus one, plus one for each opponent whose life total is less than half their starting life total. Each opponent whose life total is less than half their starting life total can't cast more than one spell each turn. So to start off, this commander well, really isn't doing all that much for you. You know, three, two, haste, first strike. But once things get going, when your opponents get their life totals down, and yeah, you were incentivized to get your opponent's life totals down fast, they are going to be absolutely terrified of this commander who's going to get larger based on, you know, the number of them that are in that position. But also, hey, you're shut down on casting spells. You can only cast one spell each turn. Kind of like a rule of law type commander. Yeah, I really like that design as well. Next up, Anasi Morrowin Thief, a 2-2 Khajiit Monk that has life and it costs one white and a black. Whenever you cast a spell with Pilfer, Anasi Morrowin Thief deals one damage each opponent. If this is the second has the ability to resolve this turn, create two treasure tokens into the third. Draw a card and to illustrate what Pilfer is. Here, it's on Priest of the Moons. Pilfer, Scry 2. When this creature attacks, the defending player has lost life this turn. Scry 2. So, yeah, the more and more Pilfer effects you utilize, the more opportunities you have to actually get Anasi to trigger and to get a ton of value out of it. And yeah, I can see some, you know, interesting plays working on with this one, where maybe you're bouncing things like Pilfer, yes, you can recast them. I mean, Priest of the Moons is very low to the ground. And yeah, I think Pilfer is a very interesting mechanic and yeah, just a very interesting design overall. Moving on, High King Emmerich. Uh, and yeah, I'm highlighting Lester Ward here as well to show Ward it again. Anyways, 3-3, <laughs> three, three, Brett Noble for three, green, green, blue. Enters the battlefield, becomes warded, which again, basically means you get a ward counter on it. Next time it's going to be dealt damage or targeted by a spell or ability opponent controls. It's prevented or it's countered. Remove the ward counters from the creature. And again, it does remove all ward counters, which I believe I messed up earlier. My apologies. All those get, you know, removed. So the, you know, the proliferating probably won't help with that. Uh, previous Mitch, you know. Anyways, at the beginning of your end step, you become warded. That's nice. And also, whenever one or more ward counters are removed from you or a creature you control, put a counter on target creature you control and draw a card. So this one actually incentivizes you. Well, it's going to keep getting, you know, yourself warded, which is nice. If you blink it, it's going to keep getting warded itself, which is great. You, of course, can utilize other ways to ward things like, you know, lesser ward. And when your ward counters are removed, you get counters on creatures and you draw cards. So this can, you know, essentially incentivize you to, well, I mean, uh, you know, send your creatures into combat potentially, or maybe remove those counters in different ways, or just, yeah, it's, it's just a nice additional benefit for, you know, when those creatures actually do become unwarded. But yeah, that's uh, all the legendary creatures I'm going to be highlighting now. Again, a huge thank you to Alno. This is a fantastic set, some fantastic designs in there. If you haven't checked out that link yet, make sure you go check it out. Again, 318 amazing cards, some really cool mechanics. Yeah, again, I, I can't thank Alno enough. Thank you for letting me share this. Uh, and of course, yeah, so comment below, uh, below what your thoughts are on this. And of course, as always, thanks again and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. <laughs>